Good morning. Good morning, uh, Rajiv. <clears throat> Good morning, Rajesh. Uh, how was that uh, event uh, uh, which you attended? UP Global yeah. Conference. Yeah, it was very good. Very good. I met a lot of uh, people from across the industries, uh, good investors, and uh, a lot of uh, government people were also there. So it was very good. I'll, I'll, I'll be sharing my experiences during my session also today. Actually, in Bangalore, also a lot of uh, such events are happening. Right, right. Bangalore is a hub for startups. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Startup Change Leaders uh, weekly meet. Uh, last week we couldn't meet, but uh, uh, I was in UP. Uh, attending the UP Global uh, Investor Summit. Uh, <clears throat> it was a very uh, eventful uh, uh, week uh, last time and uh, uh, happened to meet a lot of investors from across the industries and uh, I'll be discussing. Uh, uh, so that is why I chose this topic today, it is startup trends to watch because I could gather uh, the uh, you know, information from uh, lots of people there and uh, could gauge what is the trend and how people are, uh, uh, you know, uh, moving in the startup world and what investors are also looking at and what is their uh, uh, core uh, domain area in which they are uh, <clears throat> looking to invest. So uh, to share with you, honestly, uh, you know, the uh, trends are uh, really, uh, there's a little bit slowdown on investment front uh, because of the recessionary trends, but uh, India and the UP uh, definitely is growing. Uh, UP itself has kept uh, 1 trillion economy uh, uh, target for themselves. So, um, here is a state which is trying to keep a target of 1 trillion economy, uh, which by itself uh, is very phenomenal. And uh, one of the, uh, you know, the main thing which I could gather is uh, the strength of our country lies in the, um, the big consumer base we all have, right? So uh, whether it is uh, <clears throat> any state, across the country. They have a huge uh, consumer base uh, to talk about. So uh, that is where I think everyone is uh, <clears throat> gunning their horses. And uh, that is where the uh, startup ecosystem is flourishing. And that is where uh, the investors are also becoming more and more interested in uh, the economy. Uh, as you uh, know, and we discussed it last time also, Indian economy is the only one which is growing, uh, you know, at 6.6% uh, uh, GDP growth is predicted. So um, uh, no other economy in the world, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, is they, they, are, they are growing at this pace. So that brings a lot of uh, interest in Indian economy. That brings a lot of... Uh, uh, positivity uh, in the ecosystem. And that is where uh, um, the entrepreneurship is flourishing. And the people who are uh, uh, thinking about uh, startups 
they are also uh, getting the recognition from uh, these investor groups and uh, they want to invest in India. They want to make sure that uh, the uh, ecosystem grows uh, in India and uh, infrastructure wise also, uh, I could see on the ground uh, lots of improvement. Uh, I have been visiting uh, uh, Lucknow uh, earlier as well, but uh, the kind of uh, improvement in the uh, infrastructure I saw there uh, was uh, also very, very impressive, very, very phenomenal. So I will definitely um, congratulate the uh, uh, organizers uh, of the event uh, uh, and uh, of course, UP government uh, to uh, showcase their state uh, very effectively to to the entire uh, uh, global community. So uh, that's what I think made a lot of difference. And um, so as you know, I'm Rajiv Bajaj. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I have a, a company called Bajaj and Bajaj Corporate Chambers. And uh, we, we always uh, try to bring in uh, topics which are uh, of the interest of uh, uh, the uh, investors and the startup community. So uh, now, uh, if you look at uh, by uh, in 2022, there, uh, there were some unexpected changes in the uh, startup ecosystem. Uh, there were a lot of learnings for the startups, venture capitalists, founders, and others, uh, because uh, uh, we, uh, we saw uh, new unicorns coming in. We also saw a lot of upheavals. We saw certain, uh, uh, you know, startups uh, getting uh, registered on the IPO space. Uh, we also saw uh, some uh, startups struggling on the IPO front. And uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, we, it was a mixed bag of uh, uh, you know, revelations and the learnings for the startup ecosystem. And uh, uh, we, we had uh, uh, learned from those and uh, that is going to be uh, having a lasting impact on uh, how the scenario is going to be in 2023. And uh, this is what we are going to uh, talk about today. Uh, not only Indian scenario, uh, also the global scenario uh, how uh, the global, uh, you know, environment is there in the uh, uh, startup ecosystem. And um, uh, I was referring to a PricewaterhouseCoopers uh, report uh, where they mentioned that Indian startup raised 24 billion in uh, year 22, um, you know, which is 33% uh, uh, less than uh, the, uh, uh, you know, 20 year 2020s uh, number, uh, which was uh, 33 billion. Uh, so uh, there was a um, kind of a tapering down in terms of the investment which was uh, uh, coming into India, uh, but that was because of the uh, recessionary trends uh, all across uh, uh, the world. And uh, uh, if you look at the uh, figures uh, of uh, uh, 19, it was 10.9 billion, uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, it was uh, uh, basically uh, less than, uh, uh, you know, uh, much lesser than 33 billion, which was there in 2020. So um, there are two sectors which uh, uh, remain unperturbed uh, uh, from the fundraising. Uh, one was the software uh, as a service uh, called SaaS. And, uh, uh, and FinTech. So these two spaces have uh, seen a uh, uh, good amount of investment coming in, uh, in the uh, overall system. And also uh, uh, our startup ecosystem, uh, as uh, uh, even mentioned by our prime minister, uh, is gonna be third largest in the world. Uh, so, uh, so now uh, in the whole uh, Indian government, is uh, very much uh, focused on uh, in, in creating a, a startup as a backbone for the economy, and uh, this is what uh, uh, you know they are they are trying to do. Uh, and uh, all of us, we are contributing in our own way in this uh, success story. Uh, uh, if whether we are 
participating in these kind of events or we are conducting these kind of seminars or we are uh, spreading the knowledge about the startup world and trying to uh, uh, you know tell everyone that uh, this is the time to uh, actually show your entrepreneurial uh, skills and this is the time to come and uh, uh, try and participate in the startup ecosystem so uh, uh, what is in store for india uh, of course uh, uh, you know what are the sectors which are hot uh, what are the sectors uh, which we have to look forward to in 2023 so we'll be discussing that part um, you know, is the market sentiment around the startups is bullish or not we will be discussing this and also we will be discussing uh, uh, you know uh, today that uh, uh, what is the uh, uh, you know list of some trends in the ecosystem uh, which uh, will become big in the times to come so uh, that uh, uh, you know is going to be our focal point of discussion today and uh, definitely uh, i'm sure uh, we will make it interactive so that uh, uh, you know we we learn from each other and uh, we we also understand uh, your uh, questions and uh, I'll be too happy to answer whatever best I can. And uh, so one major trend which I observed and uh, uh, I think all of you will agree with me is uh, the uh, EV space is becoming bigger. You know? uh, now uh, the EV is a focus for uh, the government of India also. And uh, uh, there was, uh, uh, I was referring to this PWC report which talked about that companies like Amazon, Flipkart, Big Basket have committed to aggressive two-wheeler and three-wheeler EV adoption in the delivery fleet. So EV delivery systems are going to be uh, a big, uh, uh, you know, future game changer. And uh, availability of EV models increase, and uh, they will become dominant due to the significant uh, operating cost advantages. And uh, if the cost will come down, the consumer will stand to gain. Uh, they will, uh, all these companies will pass on uh, the cost, uh, uh, you know, benefit to the consumers. And uh, ultimately, uh, there'll be more and more positive trend that will be seen for uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, delivery uh, ecosystem. So EV is surely um, going to be a game changer. So uh, EV delivery systems are uh, going to be uh, in thing for the future. Also, um, the growth in EV space is going to continue to happen because uh, um, the goal set by the country, uh, whether it is cutting carbon emission or uh, to net zero by 2070 or becoming 100% electric by 2030, uh, they are both, uh, uh, you know, um, part of it, uh, uh, I know Bhargavi, Bhargavi mentioned uh, this, uh, who heads, uh, uh, who was one of the partner in uh, Java Capital, that uh, EV is going to be uh, a big, big, big time, uh, uh, you know, Java Capital is a Bangalore based uh, uh, firm, uh, which helps uh, the startup ecosystem. And also, um, uh, investors are not only interested in manufacturing of EVs, but also in other aspects such as EV financing, battery management system, upcoming technology, which has potential to disrupt the ecosystem. So uh, ecosystem disruption is uh, something uh, which uh, most of the people are interested in these days. Uh, I see a lot of traction uh, where people actually want to uh, uh, invest in disruptive technologies and uh, they are uh, very clear that uh, they have to uh, uh, invest in uh, a system where uh, uh, they they have something uh, uh, extraordinary to talk about and once you have uh, that kind of uh, uh, idea in place definitely uh, uh, the game changer uh, capabilities are there and uh, that is how uh, we all are looking towards uh, finding those ideas which are uh, uh, you know creating ripples in the market 
so uh, that that being one uh, uh, there is uh, uh, another uh, uh, very important uh, uh, you know sector which is emerging is edtech now edtech is uh, basically uh, uh, we we had uh, seen 39% decline in the fund rate uh, uh, you know uh, because of uh, the reasons uh, we all know uh, covid 19 pandemic uh, induced a lockdown uh, where a lot of online learning uh, was happening but uh, in 2022 we saw the schools and offices opening up uh, they there was uh, uh, you know the layoffs and all uh, um, uh, within this sector uh, increased because of the reduced uh, dependence of people on the online uh, platforms and uh, mm, uh, the people were also bored uh, I, I was talking to a few students uh, so they they uh, uh, did mention that uh, they got bored from uh, uh, you know this uh, online uh, learning so they they wanted uh, physical uh, classes to happen not start and um, so uh, some companies have even uh, uh, shut shop uh, in wake of the funding winter and uh, because of these uncertainties investors see a hybrid future to the edtech space uh, hybrid model means uh, you must have seen even uh, 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 best uh, companies like Baiju's and all, they have also come up with uh, some classrooms also uh, and they have tied up with uh, some uh, companies which are uh, into classroom coaching. So um, so there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, churning which is happening into edtech space and hybrid model is in uh, and uh, uh, there are a lot of big players who are already following uh, this methodology and uh, India's 101st unicorn physics wala ventured into offline space uh, with uh, uh, you know uh, you know with the PW with their Pete last year and even at techs uh, like Baiju as I mentioned uh, they started 250 offline centers. Um, and uh, they have big plans to get into this hybrid uh, mode. So uh, all this churning is happening in the industry. So uh, I'm sure uh, we will discuss this part and uh, how this is going to uh, uh, impact uh, uh, the business model. Uh, of course, uh, focus on profitability has increased. Uh, so um, all the... Uh, VCs and uh, private equity firms, uh, uh, they, uh, uh, you know, have uh, uh, built up of a dry powder due to uh, pullback of uh, VC funds. Uh, can you can you kindly put all of you on yourself on mute, please? And uh, uh, the focus is on companies which have strong unit economics and path to profitability. So uh, that's very, very important because if your unit economics are not good, if your, uh, uh, you know, uh, business model is such that you are not uh, earning uh, uh, per unit and you are burning more cash, uh, then uh, definitely you will have a challenge, right? So um, investors uh, believe uh, that, uh, uh, you know, funding winter has brought a lot of seriousness in the startup ecosystem because uh, they have start, started placing more focus on financials and fundamentals. And uh, gone are the days when only uh, growth at all cost uh, is uh, encouraged. Um, I don't want to name uh, some uh, startups uh, uh, because it may not be professional on my part, but I heard that some of these uh, startups which are into um, quick delivery, um, they, uh, have a burnout which is even five times their uh, revenue numbers. So if you are making a burnout which is five times your revenue, uh, you can imagine uh, the kind of uh, challenge uh, you have in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, making things uh, tougher for you. So um, uh, we we all need to uh, understand that uh, this is uh, how the game is changing. 
and uh, we are we are there is a renowned uh, renewed focus on uh, uh, you know um, uh, on the uh, profitability and uh, early stage funding is uh, something which is uh, um, you know uh, has been on the steady rise uh, uh, basically uh, the numbers are uh, speaking for themselves uh, we have seen uh, uh, 1.3 billion in uh, 20 to 2.5 billion to 2.8 billion in 22. Uh, the average ticket size of the deal is uh, uh, 4 million uh, US dollars, uh, which is again uh, on the rise. Uh, people are not looking at uh, smaller investments. The ticket size is increasing because uh, people are willing to take risks and uh, they are willing to put in their uh, money on uh, uh, really good uh, ideas. And uh, also uh, investors have uh, uh, pressed the pause button on uh, uh, growth stage and late stage funding because uh, uh, they want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, wait for some time to see the impact of these recessionary uh, trends on these uh, startups. Uh, but it will definitely pick up in the latter half of 23 and uh, once the market condition improve. So uh, uh, the dry powder, which is waiting to be deployed, will most likely go to early stage startups. That is what uh, uh, the trends say. And I did some of the research. Uh, so uh, it's a good news for uh, early stage, uh, early stage uh, startups. And uh, uh, definitely they are uh, uh, going to get uh, benefited. Uh, there is another uh, sector which is uh, receiving a lot of uh, um, attention, which is the climate tech because of this global warming. Uh, the uh, climate tech startups are uh, uh, on the rise. Uh, so there's, uh, uh, you know, uh, one of the startup raised $2 billion, uh, in 22. And uh, mm, uh, there is a focus on, uh, uh, you know, sustainability. And uh, ESG is uh, uh, the uh, new buzzword which is going on in the industry. So everybody is uh, focused on environmental uh, aspects and uh, uh, the sustainability space uh, is uh, definitely going to get more traction. So uh, uh, according to BSG, uh, uh, green uh, startup uh, uh, are, are going to be, uh, you know, uh, one of the buzzwords uh, which is going to be there and uh, a lot of uh, uh, start, uh, top startup founders like Nitin uh, from Zerodha, uh, Dipinder from Zomato, Bavish uh, from Ola Caps and a lot of other venture capital uh, uh, funds are uh, focusing on uh, this uh, United Nations net zero emission target of 2050. So um, everybody realizes that uh, uh, this environment space is going to become more and more exciting, more and more mature. And uh, once we uh, are uh, into this uh, uh, environmental based uh, startups, then uh, definitely uh, the things are going to be much better. Things are going to uh, look uh, much bigger in, in terms of scale. And uh, uh, there is a uh, there are funds which are very much focused on uh, funding the companies which are uh, uh, on the climate tech, and uh, they there is a renewed uh, uh, focus on that. Now, <clears throat> now uh, before we move into the global scenario, I, I would like to take a pause here uh, uh, and uh, leave the floor open for uh, your opinion as to what is your experience on the uh, uh, latest trends, uh, which you think uh, are the trends for the uh, startups in 2023. Uh, so uh, Atul, uh, would you like to say something? Yeah. So uh, Rajiv, you uh, rightly talked about uh, the uh, trends in the recent months, and they are definitely going to get more pronounced in the months and quarters in the years to come. So one of this clear trend is the EV. So there's a lot of interest 
on the policy front from the government of India to push basically the EV. I would just like to give for the benefit of all of our uh, audience and listeners that uh, I've got a, a recent, uh, I was just looking at uh, the uh, report of Siam. Siam mm-hmm. is a, a society for uh, Indian manufacturers association and they compile data. So they have given the annual forecast on the domestic front for the EV penetration <coughs> for FI23 and FI24. And then they compared it with what it was uh, in FI21. So they have given this data in which they said that uh, starting from, let us say, FI21 uh, and going into FI23 and then projecting for FI24, how are the things uh, uh, looking up so far as the EV part is concerned. Now, in that, they have divided this uh, into passenger vehicles, then the two wheelers, and the three wheelers. So, on the passenger vehicles, they said in, that in FI21, there was no EV penetration in the passenger vehicle. Mm-hmm. FI23, they said that of the total domestic market, 1.2% is the one which is now penetrated through the EV vehicle that is on the passenger four wheelers. Right. And in FI24, this would increase to 3 to 4%. Mm-hmm. Similarly, on two wheelers, they are talking about that in FI21, the penetration of EV was only 0.3%. In FI23, it is expected to increase to about 7%. And in FI24, it would increase to about 8 to 9%. Mm-hmm. But the most interesting part, which they said, is that in the three wheelers, they said that FI21, the penetration was only 1%. And in FI23, it would increase to 8%. And FI24 is the year in which it would increase to 12%. So this data clearly depicts that there is a real work on the policy front which has been done by the government of India. And on the back of that, there are many players who have built up the business models for acquiring the market space into the uh, into the EV space. And uh, I uh, recollect uh, two or three companies who have done big time on the EV penetration. So on the uh, two-wheeler side, TBS is the one which is yeah. uh, doing great amount of work and they are attracting a lot of capital. <coughs> and the other one is the one which is Greaves Cotton. So Greaves mm-hmm. Cotton is the one which has done a good amount of work on the three wheelers, on the EV on the three wheelers. Uh-huh. Uh, this, yeah. So these kind of things is definitely going to get more pronounced and uh, there would be more space for growth are the players who have ventured out in this uh, particular uh, field. And yeah. uh, I myself uh, uh, have been advising in the past one of the corporate who had the h and funds and all that. And uh, uh, finally, uh, I made them or we made them agree to invest into a startup, which is essentially building up uh, the uh, battery uh, infrastructure, basically the EV infrastructure uh, for the uh, electric vehicles, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, the one. Uh, the founders they were Indians. They were uh, working from US and Netherlands, and then they a couple of years back, they uh, we persuaded them to come to India and invest in their talent and all that the technology in India. And we through the HNA route uh, gave them the access to the capital and all that. Now the traction on the build up of that business is uh, something which is unheard of, mm-hmm. yeah? So even at the early stages uh, of investing, uh, let us say 50, 60 CR, their valuation is about 150 crores or so. Mm-hmm. So clearly the EV is the one, as you rightly said, that uh, is the one which is getting a lot of attention. And uh, this is one theme on which the uh, things would be more focused by the government of India in the times to come. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I was, uh, when I told you I was in UP, uh, there is a company which I saw uh, in uh, that uh, exhibition there. Uh, Basically, they are into uh, uh, EV putting uh, EV charging stations. And uh, those charging stations, you can monitor from uh, 
uh, through your own uh, web uh, device or yeah. your own mobile phone or something and yeah. uh, you go to the charging station and just uh, uh, through your uh, mobile uh, and using that app you can uh, get the charging done and pay online uh, so uh, so it's an entire business model which they have created for people also to try and uh, um, you know put ev infra in a particular area yeah and, this uh, is technical yeah definitely yes, because yes, yes. payment uh, is one of the uh, i mean uh, the uh, uh, the uh, problems related to the payment how this is to be paid is the one which yes. has been a problem but then they have made the whole system uh, through the technology funds and all that the tech enabled so that the people they are not only able to plug in uh, on the charging of their vehicles and all that but pay it uh, through the online system and all that Absolutely. So that, that Absolutely. This, uh, this gap in the uh, service and all that, that, that has been plugged. So Absolutely. government is very, very clear that they want to roll out uh, something bigger uh, on the EV side uh, for the uh, two-wheelers and three-wheelers, uh, for the four-wheelers. Right. And uh, uh, no wonder that, uh, uh, I mean, in the recent uh, months, a few, four months, we all see that there's been uh, one company called uh, uh, this Landmark Cars. Uh, mm -hmm. Landmark Cars is a listed company, and uh, they uh, have tied up with, uh, with with the BYD from China or some other company. And they are selling their cars in India, the EV and all that. And mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they were uh, there in the news that uh, they are getting a lot of traction on the uh, uh, sell side of uh, sell side orders of these kind of vehicles and all that. So I am right. sure that uh, this is the in thing. This is one of the mega trends which is emerging. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So the other thing I want, would like to add here is that uh, Agri, Agri is a particular uh, space is the one which I am sure that is going to catch up in the mm -hmm. years to come. So maybe we will talk as we move along in our discussions. Sure, sure. Agri uh, has come up uh, in a big way in the budget also. Uh, the finance minister in her budget speech has uh, added Agri as one of the focus area, Agri startups as one of the focus area for the government of India. And uh, in this sector, there's a huge, huge uh, traction which is possible. And uh, as you know, India is an agriculture economy. Uh, so uh, there are lots of, uh, uh, you know, startup uh, opportunities which are there for uh, uh, teaching the uh, farmers for uh, increasing their productivity and uh, also uh, uh, adding some uh, biotechnology uh, tricks for them. So uh, yes. agree, agree, of course, is a very, very emerging area. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, I would say virgin area for uh, uh, startups to play around and yeah. uh, bring in some technology. And... Uh, uh, we, we both of us, Satul and myself, we know someone who is into uh, agri, uh, you know, drying of agri uh, material, uh, food products and things like that. Uh, yeah. And uh, bringing in, uh, uh, you know, uh, saving that material uh, from, uh, you know, getting wasted. So uh, there, there, there's a lot which can be done in agri space. Yeah, yeah. So, so there's a whole value chain which can be created in the agri space. So Absolutely. we will definitely talk about that uh, in one of the sessions. Sure, sure. I think agree. We can keep it a focus session on agree itself. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we can invite uh, a few experts yeah. also on sure. this. All right. Now, uh, looking at the global trends, uh, uh, Ajish, uh, any any question from your side? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, could you? Um, you mentioned like SaaS and the fintech uh, are the yeah. attracted more. Could you give some examples of SaaS? Uh... SaaS is basically, I hope you understand, is uh, that uh, it is a, a software-based, uh, uh, you know, uh, service, See? right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, so when we uh, say SaaS is, uh, 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 there are certain uh, companies which are into. Uh, Producing the software, I, I uh, advise a company into healthcare regulatory uh, services. Now, their focus is uh, on uh, creating some uh, uh, software 
uh, which uh, will be helping uh, uh, all these uh, uh, healthcare companies to get the regulatory clearances. You know? So, so they are coming up with the software, uh, and uh, that software is uh, going to be uh, the uh, uh, leading uh, sales model for them. You know? So, similarly, uh, there are so many companies which are uh, uh, into uh, the software uh, uh, production. And uh, these companies are uh, uh, finding a lot of traction uh, because uh, um, there are a lot of CRM uh, related uh, companies uh, which uh, have really flourished. Uh, uh, the, the problem which is being faced by modern age uh, uh, e-commerce related businesses is the lead management, no? uh, your customer relationship management your uh, order management only yesterday i was talking uh, uh, with a startup which has come up with a very noble novel idea of how to manage your sales force you know? because uh, uh, now since uh, the whole environment has opened up uh, the sales force, ma force management is uh, also a challenge so they do geo tagging of uh, the people who are in the field and uh, they can report that they are visiting the such and such place. So your entire sales force, you are able to control through the software. You know? So there can be multiple uh, such uh, uh, services uh, and these kind of companies are getting a lot of traction because, uh, and FinTech, you know, FinTech is uh, uh, like, uh, these insurance uh, based companies or uh, companies offering mutual funds uh, online uh, to the consumers. So all these companies are uh, getting good traction. They are able to uh, generate good revenue and they are doing very well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And also you mentioned about now the companies focus on unit, unit economics. That means they check the profitability of a single unit. Absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, there are companies which were only focused on uh, more revenue. So uh, people used to invest, oh, this company has grown 50% or there is a potential to grow 100% on revenue year on year. So we put money in this company because there is a revenue increase. But uh, if the uh, burnout is uh, say five times and at that cost you are increasing your revenue, that doesn't make sense. No, what is your uh, per unit profitability? What is your profitability from um, whatever business you are doing? That is the key. So uh, people are looking into the uh, uh, profitability, and burnout is not being encouraged anymore. And we also sp spoke about sustainability in climate uh, climate yes. change. Yes. So sustainability in the sense like uh, it we should be it should not affect us people right yeah absolutely so uh, the companies which are into uh, uh, for for example this ev space is also uh, all the companies are sustainable uh, companies like uh, like that solar uh, power uh, generation companies then wind power generation companies like that there are many such sectors where uh, we they, the companies are contributing to the environmental uh, uh, you know, reduction of pollution and uh, improving of the environment. So all these companies, ESG companies are getting much bigger traction you know, because that's the focus of uh, uh, everyone around the globe. You know? yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, hi, Rajiv. I just hi. want to ask one question from you. Yeah. Uh, it's not based out of basically agri tech. Uh, I'm, I'm being in the uh, working of consulting of content type content writing, mm -hmm. consulting and kind of management uh, with this kind of mm -hmm. content marketing and all. Mm -hmm. And uh, just uh, please guide me on that. Uh, what should the key step I should uh, adopt first to get my client and be with my client because I have to serve my client from Bangalore. I am sitting in Noida. So mm -hmm. how can we be in touch with them on a regular basis and how can I mentor them? How can I expand my business? I know this is a uh, far question that what we are discussing. But <laughs> I just want to ask you. It's my humble request to you, please. If you would like, yeah. that, if you can answer, please. I think I think the answer is going to be very long. It will uh, take uh, uh, us a very long time. But I can give you some uh, very brief tips. Uh, please, you know, there, there are 
you know, um, lead management companies, and I'm sure you are into content creation, so you will be uh, able to manage your digital, uh, uh, you know, uh, space. No? So um, the lead management and uh, uh, otherwise there are various softwares which are available for uh, uh, lead generation and lead management. So we can talk about it offline. Uh, you can get in touch with me after the session. So that sure, sure. I can yeah. give you some tips. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks, thanks, Rajiv ji. I'm right. really thankful for you for this answer. Right, thank you. All right, so let's move on because we have uh, only 20 minutes left for today's session. So uh, the most promising startup uh, industries the world over, uh, uh, you know, um, we, we had uh, seen a lot of unicorns uh, globally and they were just, con unicorn itself were co contributing 3.7 trillion uh, to the world's uh, overall uh, valuation. And uh, the way, uh, uh, you know, startup industry is likely to grow by uh, 2030, if you look at biotech is going to uh, be the order of the day, as uh, uh, all of us, we just discussed that biotech is definitely going to change the uh, growth trajectory. So uh, you can see from the graph uh, uh, how uh, this rise is going to be by uh, in the next few years. Similarly, um, the next uh, big thing is going to be Metaverse, uh, Web3 and uh, uh, all those uh, companies which are into gaming or virtual reality, augmented reality. These companies are going to have a lot of a good future. And um, AI and robotics, uh, you can see the next line, um, that is close to Metaverse. They are also going to grow. AI, uh, we all know, uh, we uh, must have, uh, uh, you know, by now tested chat GPT, uh, how it is working. So this is another flavor of the future, uh, which is uh, definitely going to change the world. And FinTech, because everybody want to uh, manage the finances and uh, more, more effective management of finances and uh, through easy management tools, um, uh, is what fintech companies are doing. So uh, this is again uh, something I think we, we need to look at. So um, um, we, we have uh, some big numbers coming in. Most unicorns uh, uh, are in the fintech space, biotech space, virtual reality, and uh, all, all these have a very great potential uh, uh, and uh, we, can, we can closely watch these companies. Uh, so uh, let's talk about fintech. Uh, this is a global scenario we are talking about. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the technology is being used uh, to facilitate transaction, documentation, trading within the financial sector. So uh, all these companies, uh, they have a uh, um, lot uh, to, uh, you know, there, there are certain world-renowned uh, fintech firms called Mint, Cash App, or Robinhood. And uh, uh, although fintech funding declined, uh, uh, you know, still 21% of the unicorn companies uh, are from the fintech industry. And uh, also, um, uh, you know, the uh, struggle for uh, uh, alternative banking, uh, uh, fee-free trading, and uh, for other financial, we, we saw meteoric rise of Zeroda. Zeroda is, uh, uh, you know, a app which is helping uh, all these youngsters to trade on the stock exchange. So um, uh, even, uh, and they, they are not charging any brokerage. So uh, the model is different, but they have seen uh, their growth has really uh, 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 gone, uh, uh, you know, in a big way they have grown. And uh, uh, the uh, projected uh, 700 billion market by 2030 uh, uh, in this fintech space. So this is uh, another uh, big area to watch. And uh, um, after fintech, uh, artificial intelligence, I think uh, this is uh, uh, something uh, for all of us to look at. Um, the valuations are exceeding one and a half trillion by 2030, and uh, 
there'll be explosive growth of open ai chat gpt uh, and uh, also uh, there's a huge role uh, uh, for these uh, ais in research content development marketing and other business initiatives so <clears throat> uh, uh, our friend uh, who's here from the content development side you are going to have a challenge uh, from uh, these uh, uh, ai tools so um, uh, you know we we all need to be aware uh, what is happening in uh, uh, this space and uh, um, there are a lot of uh, uh, you know more companies which are going to come in this space uh, where uh, um, not only uh, the uh, uh, you know they are throwing uh, the content uh, even the codes can be written so uh, if uh, uh, you know uh, uh, instruction is given to the tool that i want a code to be written in this uh, for development of this so the software is automatically uh, through artificial intelligence writing the code so that means it's going to be a challenge for the coders it is going to be a challenge for uh, lots of people who are actually uh, making their uh, living on uh, uh, you know the, the content creation and coding and uh, things like that so uh, AI is going to be a flavor uh, of the day. So we need to understand. And then blockchain. Uh, blockchain is also uh, uh, something uh, where, uh, you know, different codes are uh, uh, getting created. And these blocks are uh, being used uh, for uh, uh, the metaverse related companies and uh, uh, crypto and all uh, uh, was also part of the blockchain technology and uh, uh, there's going to be uh, you know <clears throat> a lot of uh, focus on robotics and uh, uh, other such companies where funding percentages are uh, uh, going to uh, have a, a future uh, there will be increase in the funding in these areas uh, but uh, uh, there's a temporary slowdown on uh, AI technology because already um, the uh, um, uh, lot of companies have come in. So there's already a big competition in this market, but uh, um, uh, Quiet Dance is a uh, highest valued uh, startup uh, uh, in this space. And uh, we, we will see uh, some more uh, traction in this, no? Then uh, uh, comes the metaverse uh, startups. Uh, Facebook uh, has uh, changed its name to Meta, uh, considering that metaverse is going to be uh, the future. You know? And uh, they are uh, putting a lot of bet on virtual reality. And uh, uh, you know uh, they are covering everything from crypto to NFTs and uh, digital fashion, gaming, and uh, uh, these are the new areas uh, uh, which are emerging in a very big way. And uh, I know uh, uh, certain companies which are uh, putting in a lot of their effort and money into this uh, web space. And uh, uh, the, the, the way we actually shop is also going to change. We, we can actually uh, uh, test the clothes on our own avatar uh, and uh, we can we can see that uh, how things are i think uh, this is another area where we will have a separate session uh, we have uh, one of our uh, member uh, community member only uh, who is an expert in this area so maybe uh, i will have uh, i'll request him to uh, give us a session uh, again on uh, we, we already had one but we'll have another session on Web3 and Metaverse uh, uh, very soon. And uh, also, uh, there is a uh, uh, revenue opportunity, uh, which is uh, huge because this market can approach 800 billion by 2024 and 1.6 trillion by 2030. So uh, the digital gold rush has already uh, 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 Got the attention of the big brands, uh, so Gucci, Nike, Coca-Cola, J.P. Morgan, and others. They are all uh, putting their bets on metaverse-related companies, and uh, also biotech. Biotech, uh, we we all know, uh, is an industry where uh, uh, biology and engineering meet 
to tackle world's most complex problems. So um, uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, world hunger and quick pandemic response was uh, uh, managed through a uh, lot of uh, uh, activity in the biotech space. So um, uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, something we can uh, uh, look forward to. And uh, I'm sure this is going to uh, change the uh, way uh, people are uh, looking at uh, things. And uh, also, um, the uh, uh, biotech market is going to be 3.8 trillion by 2023. Uh, and uh, uh, there's a CAGR of 13.9%, which is very, very impressive because a growth of 13.9% in an industry uh, is uh, uh, phenomenal. So uh, biotech is the uh, uh, order of the day. Biotech is something which is going to uh, grow. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we have uh, uh, lots of biotech funding also, uh, which will come. So as we were talking about uh, the, uh, you know, startup uh, uh, in agri space, a uh, lot of biotechnology is going to be adopted in this area. So uh, I think there's a huge, huge potential uh, uh, in uh, uh, biotech uh, uh, you know, we, which we are going to have. So um, uh, the uh, uh, conclusions which we can, uh, you know, Nishant mentioned about some uh, 5G service market size. 5G, of course, uh, uh, is something, but uh, uh, 5G is uh, uh, more a game of uh, uh, big players. Uh, so um, for startups, uh, uh, you know, we, we are very focused on the startups uh, uh, who will uh, uh, get benefited because 5G is uh, a big, big uh, investment game. Uh, everybody cannot uh, survive in this market uh, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, so of course 5G uh, as an industry, if you look at, uh, there's a huge uh, growth potential in uh, 5G segment. But uh, looking at the uh, concluding our today's uh, discussion, and then again, I'll uh, have the uh, you know, floor open for our observations. Uh, one, the uh, microeconomic environment has uh, driven some major trends in startup ecosystem. A lot of promise is there, especially for innovative startups, uh, where uh, uh, priority is people and sustainability. And uh, in 2023, we will see trends which are uh, uh, likely to persist. Uh, and uh, many startups, um, uh, it is a tight, you know, time to tighten belt and uh, get creative with fundraising because fundraising is uh, not that simple anymore. Uh, they, they are, uh, the investors are having lots of choices, first of all, and then they are very choosy. They, they not only invest on uh, uh, the company, they invest on the teams, they invest on uh, what kind of uh, uh, background you have, what kind of backup you have, uh, how committed you are to the project, what is your seriousness uh, towards the purpose and vision and mission of your company, uh, whether it is a disruptive technology or not. There's so many aspects uh, they look at. So uh, the first and the foremost thing for all startup entrepreneurs uh, here is you prepare yourself for the investor so that you know when you go and that is the time you should go to the market it's not that some people go to the market when they are very much underprepared um, unless your idea is so innovative and so uh, you know catchy and so disruptive that uh, in any case people will come and invest uh, otherwise, you must prepare your ground first. You must uh, be good on the compliance side. You must be good on the, uh, you know, regulatory side. You must have your, uh, uh, you know, MVP and uh, uh, everything in place. Then you go to the market because, you know, if you go uh, and people reject you, then once they have rejected you, then uh, you are losing a chance uh, uh, and you are reducing the number of people who are actually uh, uh, going to support you. So, so better go prepared to the market, better 
prepare yourself for funding and only then go uh, to the uh, uh, you know um, but uh, it is not a tough time for the good startups but yes uh, the honeymoon of uh, you know anybody and everybody getting funding uh, is uh, i would not say over but yes uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, tough phase which is going on for the startups who are uh, um, not so prepared so i think uh, the key element is have the right people working with you working for you create a good team create a compliance uh, culture in your organization and then go to the market definitely you will get a good traction so i'll leave the floor open for uh, other questions and we can conclude the session yeah yeah atul you want to say something no i think uh, i'm just uh, let's hear out from any other person and then i would like to just add a couple of lines yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, so hi, Rajiv sir, uh, Nishan Desai. Yes, yes, Nishan. So in the uh, 5G market, it's not uh, means um, a big player because uh, here I'm talking about the 5G use case. So 5G use case like uh, uh, using 5G technology in a connected car and mm -hmm. then making the use case. Mm -hmm. And then 5G use case uh, from healthcare to the operator, uh, mm -hmm. like means all the global operators. Uh -huh. and then industrial uh, segment because uh -huh. right now what is happening uh, yeah big operator has invested huge amount in taking the spectrum uh -huh. but they are not uh, getting the revenue because uh -huh. when 5g exactly use case will come like uh, vertical use case so uh -huh. in vertical use case it's not about the big player small small use case which can uh -huh. help uh, to the big uh, means it's all right, uh, like a vendor as well as operator and then integrator, one part and then use case, second part, drawn related use case. Uh -huh. And then uh, right now means uh, uh, the area where I'm working, I'm just uh, developing a small, small product related to 5G, Very which nice. can improve the network, change the user perception right. and then quality of service. So on those area, it's difficult for a big vendor to make the use case. So small concept which can help both operator, vendor, as well as a user. So those type of use case, we have a huge market. Yeah. And uh, I'm working on those type of use cases. Very nice, very nice. So uh, when I was saying, uh, you know, as such, this market is will be, uh, of course, driven by the bigger players. But yes, uh, the use case and the uh, small, small, uh, uh, when when any big industry grows, uh, definitely there are uh, opportunities uh, which are created for uh, 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 smaller players as well uh, to feed that market or create products which will fit into 5G use case as you mentioned. So definitely uh, uh, opportunity in uh, that also will be there, but uh, the burnout is also uh, bigger in uh, this space. And the uh, so so for startups, to uh, uh, create a disruptive models where they can use 5G maybe for uh, uh, you know uh, betterment of uh, the healthcare system, for example, you mentioned mm -hmm. and such other uh, you know use cases. Definitely, that opportunity exists. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah, Adul. Adish. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. yeah. yeah. Actually, you didn't mention about IoT. Internet of Things, uh, Rajiv ji. IoT is uh, now <laughs> is part and parcel of the entire uh, uh, space. You know, now the focus is becoming more on web uh, metaverse and uh, you know uh, web space and uh, uh, AI. You no, know? AI driven uh, uh, things are becoming uh, much more uh, powerful. And that is the, the now flavor of the day. IoT, of course, uh, uh, is a part and parcel of all these, uh, you know, AI as well as metaverse and uh, the growth of uh, SaaS models and things like that. But uh, yeah. uh, it has become thing of the past. <laughs> when Chad GPT has come, uh, so uh, so the scenario is changing in this uh, 
uh, you know, our web space. Yeah. And Atul ji was mentioning about landmark cars, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This landmark car is, uh, cars is one company which is in the listed space and uh, they have, they've grown and there's a lot of uh, interest, uh, I mean, investors interest which they have got of late, obviously because uh, that they uh, are having a, a kind of a non-exclusive kind of mandate though, but then they're selling these EV vehicles and a whole lot of other, uh, you know, these, uh, these vehicles, passenger vehicles and all these things. And uh, they got the rights to sell the Mercedes cars and Mercedes cars, uh, they got their uh, highest number of sales uh, worldwide from India. As in, in, in single country, India contributed the largest number of vehicle sales to them and they grew 40% in FY20, CY22 over uh, CY21. So clearly, uh, when there is something which is there of the passenger vehicle at the high end of the sales. Thank you. So overall, uh, I think uh, what is to be noted here is that uh, the Indian economy is the one which is uh, driven by the domestic consumption and the domestic consumption in turn has to be then served through the domestic investments. So there is, uh, of course, when we look at the globe, so uh, on the export side, there may be blips. There may be one engine or two engine which will be down, but then there are enough cylinders in a vehicle uh, out of which if there are a couple of cylinders which may not fire, but then domestic economy is the one which is bound to give the basically the uh, platform on which the businesses would grow. And uh, we all have seen that uh, till FI22, I mean, a uh, good two years have been lost uh, because of the COVID and all that. And uh, this financial year has been the one where the corporate India, they started seeing at least the volumes coming back to the pre-COVID level in some of the sectors. And uh, in the next year, we would see that there would be a volume growth and this volume growth would be over and above what the volumes existed in the pre-COVID uh, financial year FI, uh, FI20. So yep. the growth is bound to come because it is going to be driven by the domestic consumption base. That is one. And the second is that the Indian GDP is the one which everybody is saying and it is uh, not only said by the Indian government side but also the worldwide rating agencies and all that it would still be grow at about six and a half to seven percent. So the only joker in the pack has been the inflation. And this inflation is the one which of course has uh, increased the rate of interest also. But this is more of a Western phenomena. So far as India is concerned, if the economy is growing, then uh, interest rate is the one which is essentially a very small element of the whole ecosystem. And uh, the money is available at a certain price. So this price is the one which uh, would be determined by a lot of factors, not only the interest rate which is prevalent in the US market or, or the Indian uh, repo, repo rate market and all that. So, so, so for the startups, if the money is not available through the growth equity or uh, the late stage funding, if it's not available through, uh, let us say the equity uh, or these kind of uh, the, uh, the growth stage funding the houses and all that, the, the still the funds are available and they are available through the venture capital funding and all that. Yeah. So, I mean, if the idea is good, then definitely the uh, G, GMV and all these businesses, they can be scaled up because the demand is there. And if the demand is there, the business is growing, then the funds are available. It is only a small blip in the whole cycle of the startup ecosystem and the funding may have dried up for some time, but again, the system would come back. So uh, as they say that, keep on moving, keep on innovating, keep on going, keep on redefining uh, along the line and all that and uh, find the path to profitability at some point in time. There are enough takers for uh, taking the stake in your businesses. Absolutely, absolutely. I agree with you, Atul. And uh, I was talking to a US-based merchant banker 
and uh, he mentioned that uh, uh, you know the equity is just one of the uh, funding options there are yeah. so many so many instruments which are available uh, in the market uh, where even debt uh, with uh, some uh, bloated uh, returns uh, or uh, with some uh, you know leeway that okay you take the debt today but you start paying after two years three years once you start getting the traction uh, yeah. that is or oh, those kind of uh, instruments and schemes are also possible uh, ccps we already uh, talked about many times so so all these uh, combination of all these uh, uh, you know instruments and funding can definitely lead to uh, you know money being coming in for the startups equally but, uh, important uh, for us to note uh, you sort of interrupt here is that equally important for us to note is uh, the fact that uh, the indian macros yeah. they are much better as compared to uh, the developed countries or many other uh, fragile countries Absolutely. because uh, we not only have been able to withstand withstand this uh, storm of the covid and all that but then post that uh, even if uh, you know the free uh, helicopter money era is the one which is now out but still india has got uh, the fair amount of debt and all that the government is ready to spend so much of the huge money on the infrastructure side and all that which in any case augurs well for attracting lot of uh, foreign direct investments in various sectors and uh, the other is that uh, the uh, fiscal deficit that is the one which is still packed at only sub 6% i mean there are economies where the debt to gdp has gone out of uh, proportions and therefore they are basically uh, on the brink of bankruptcy and all that and they are seeking the bailouts but in india those kind of things are not there the government is very much uh, aware of uh, the uh, prudent borrowings which they need to make they are not uh, looking at uh, raising the borrowing beyond a particular point and uh, the things are in control overall yeah and of course of late we have seen that the banking industry or the psus and all that they now are coming back because they have been able to raise capital at the good times so the capital adequacy ratios are much better and the credit uptake is the one which is now taking off so overall there are those good levers which are available so that the uh, economy per se would be in good shape and uh, if the businesses are built up related to the uh, serving the indian economy and all that then i think uh, there is no looking back absolutely absolutely so there is a lot of positivity as you can see uh, in the talks here and uh, there is a huge huge potential for the startups and uh, 2023 definitely will bring in a lot of cheer to this uh, uh, ecosystem so with that uh, let us close today's discussion so thank you very much uh, all of you for joining in and uh, uh, do tune in uh, next week we'll come up with something more interesting more innovative topic so that uh, yeah. uh, we we carry forward uh, our uh, uh, this uh, quest to uh, enhance uh, in this uh, startup uh, space thank you so much thank you bye bye thank you bye 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 Thank you.